Yep, my setup's a little unusual for Planet Side. In fact, it wasn't even designed with Planet Side in mind. But when you're focused on playing flight and space sims, and your outfit wants you to play Planet Side, well, you know what they say necessity is the mother of all invention. Firstly, let's get this out of the way. You don't need to set up as elaborate as mine in order to set up joysticks in Planet Side 2. For some of you, this video will be a curiosity. For others, it might be the solution to a problem you've had with getting Planet Side to detect joysticks and controllers you have connected to your computer. I realize this is not a common configuration, but there are some benefits you can get out of it. Now, before you go off telling me that Planet Side's designed for flying with the mouse and not joysticks, I have to tell you, I agree. Straight up, the vehicles likely to get the most use out of this are the Valkyrie and the Galaxy. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, let's jump into getting Planet Side to recognize all of the inputs. I personally enjoy flying the Valkyrie for my outfit, so getting my setup to work for Planet Side 2 was essential for me joining in with them. Whenever I stream, I often get a lot of questions about how I was able to get Planet Side to recognize my joystick inputs. There was also a thread on Reddit a while back, and I've been trying to come up with a good way of making this video, and it's been through several revisions as I've tried to make it fit the audience. For this remastered version, I wanted to include this update, as pointed out by user Joypunk on Reddit. I've never used the Steam version, so I never realized that Steam can block controller inputs. Hopefully, if you're looking to use a joystick with PlanetSide, this video will help. PlanetSide does offer some support for using a joystick, however, it's very limited. If you only have one joystick or gamepad device connected, then you shouldn't have any difficulties in getting PlanetSide to recognize the input and bind things in-game. However, in order to get the most use out of a joystick and throttle, or joystick and joystick, or even including pedals, we need to use as many analog axis inputs as possible. If a particular input can be bound to an analog axis, it's always to your advantage because it will give you more precision over controls. Since Planet Side will only pick up the first input device, this poses a problem. Since most of the time, these analog inputs are going to be spread across multiple physical devices, each of which are going to be recognized separately as their own device. Most sticks only have a limited number of axis inputs, which won't give you a desirable level of control. We need to account for roll, pitch, yaw, vertical thrust, as well as throttle. The more analog controls we can add, the more precise inputs we can get in as many directions as possible. I know this is a reason why some people give up from talking to them on Reddit and on streams. And it was certainly the major hurdle that I had to overcome in order to get this setup working. Unfortunately, the biggest challenge is embedded within the game itself. As I mentioned, PlanetSide only picks up the first input device, so trying to get anything else to be bound is futile. You'll spend time, energy, effort, and nothing will ever work. Because Windows controls the device order and PlanetSide uses it for detection, you'll be left with a screen of control bindings that you cannot change whatsoever, even if your joysticks are responding in other programs. At this point, you're left staring at a wall of control bindings, each one of them mocking you for even having such a silly idea as using a joystick in Planet Side. Because it can only detect the first input device, and you have no control over the order of those devices, you're not able to get everything bound within the control scheme in game. To make matters worse, there's no easily accessible way to change the order of your joystick devices within Windows. I can tell you there are a few methods that flight and space sim pilots use in order to control their device order, but unfortunately, none of them are applicable to PlanetSide. So what is the way around this otherwise unassailable mountain of an issue? How can we get around failure? Because it's up to the developers to add support for recognizing multiple joystick devices, we have to use a virtual joystick device. 
to merge all of our physical devices into one controller that PlanetSide will detect. My go-to for this is VJoy and Joystick Gremlin. I should note that there are many different ways of doing this, and some joystick manufacturers have their own software, such as Thrustmaster's Target software, but VJoy and Joystick Gremlin will work with any controllers. This allows you to create a composite device out of all your hardware. VJoy creates a virtual joystick you can send input to, and Joystick Gremlin remaps controllers to that input. This allows you to merge all devices to the VJoy device. Using this method, we can make the VJoy device the first detected device by PlanetSide, and we can pass up to 8 analog inputs to it. I've posted links in this video so you can download both. There's still no precise way to control the device order, even with VJoy, so you'll have to add and remove devices until one of them becomes the first device. Unfortunately, because it's random, it's going to be trial and error and will depend on the other devices you have connected. With a little bit of playing around using Joystick Gremlin, we can find which VJoy device is being detected by PlanetSide by remapping a button on the joystick to a VJoy device and then seeing if it will bind in game. Then we can remap the input from our controllers to that VJoy device. In my case, this happens to be VJoy device 11. You'll need to make sure that the profile you create under Joystick Gremlin is running anytime you want these inputs to work. And that's the hard part out of the way. We can go back into PlanetSide and configure all of the control bindings. If something doesn't appear to be working, make sure the setup in Joystick Gremlin is correct. Make sure the buttons and analog access inputs you want to send to the virtual joystick so you can send to PlanetSide are set up properly. If you've managed to make it this far, you're ready to take to the skies of Araxis with a fully fledged joystick setup. At this point, I can already sense that some people may be saying, it's not fair to have that many analog access inputs on a single device. Well, here's the same type of device that PlanetSide uses on console, that has five or six analog access inputs, more than enough to cover everything PlanetSide needs without any kind of special configuration and can be used on PC. And just like a mouse versus a gamepad for aiming, the same holds true for joysticks. This is more akin to using software that comes with a keyboard or mouse to remap their buttons. We're only getting one action per button press or one action per change in analog access input. The inputs are simply being forwarded to one device that PlanetSide can read. Now that you've seen the method needed to get everything working, you can decide if it's worth the hassle. We are partway to answering the question, should you use a joystick in PlanetSide 2? To answer that question once and for all, we need to take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of analog input and weigh them against the pros and cons of using a mouse and keyboard. As previously mentioned, aiming is going to be difficult, especially compared to a mouse because PlanetSide is optimized for that type of input. Your ability to aim is going to be straight up capped by the quality of the sensors in your joystick, as well as the smoothness of the gimbal mechanism. Both of these points also apply to all other aspects of flying, as maneuvering is ultimately done with the joystick in this setup. Using a higher quality joystick, such as one with Hall Effect sensors and a metal gimbal, will deliver the best results, and will also deal the best with setting the joystick dead zone to zero. This allows the most minute movements to be accurate. Lower quality joysticks such as those with pot sensors and plastic gimbals are naturally going to be less effective. Even sticks that you may think of being high quality such as the Thrustmaster Warthog here are not going to be up for the task. Although realistic, because of its relatively high spring strength and sticky gimbal, it won't work well for our purposes, especially for quick precise actions. This is because when using analog input, we have to transition through an axis to get the maximum input. Although in general, as long as you're not aiming, almost any joystick should work fine. The precision of the joystick will matter most for aiming, but the quality affects all aspects of flight. Sensors that are inaccurate and gimbals that stick serve to work against us. Regardless of the sensor or gimbal in the joystick, we want to tune the stick's performance specifically for planet side. We can use a response curve to control the amount of input that is translated through the virtual joystick device into game. This gives us control over the feeling of the input. And it's better than sensitivity because we can control the actual input along all parts of the curve. 
You'll need to try out different options to see how it works for your joystick. In this example here, I'm using an aggressive roll curve to offset the ramp up time of analog input, and a more gentle pitch curve to help make aiming a little easier. Depending on your joystick or throttle, you might be able to set this type of configuration up with the software that comes with it. So setting these types of response curves is not something that's exclusive to Joystick Gremlin. In some cases, on more expensive sticks, this configuration is actually saved to the joystick firmware itself. Now that our flight controls are set up, we can take a look at what they can do. In order to see if using a joystick is right for you with Planetside, we have to recognize what joystick input is good and not good at. Aiming is always going to be superior with the mouse in Planetside, simply because that's what Planetside's designed for. The biggest advantage of a joystick is the analog input that allows you to control thrust and rotation precisely. Because analog input can be delivered non-stop, you never have to lift your mouse. I know that some pilots will bind pitch and roll to keyboards and mice, but constant input is where joysticks have the home field advantage. Lifting the mouse stops the input, and using a digital button is an all or nothing solution. With analog input from a joystick, there is no mouse pad to run out of. You only need to tilt the stick to maintain constant input. Because you're not only able to deliver constant input without having to lift a mouse, you're also able to control the degree of that input. But, as mentioned, because you have to translate through that axis, this makes various aspects of twitch style aiming and instantaneous actions less effective. Analog only input also changes the thrust characteristics of each vehicle. Let's take a look at how analog input interacts with different vehicles. While the example I'm about to give is quite narrow, what's important to note is having analog input for throttle and thrust, you can precisely control how the vehicle behaves. So I hope these examples will suffice for the lack of feeling the analog input yourself. Some vehicles are capable of hovering perfectly on their own without any input. This is true of the Galaxy, the Liberator, and the Valkyrie, as long as it is equipped with hover frame. With analog input from a joystick axis, we can control precisely how much thrust to apply to counteract gravity in an ESF or a Valkyrie without hover frame. I know this isn't something you want to do often, but it does open up the option. While you can also get a similar effect by feathering a key on a keyboard, analog input smooths out and avoids the sharp on-off behavior that you would otherwise get with digital input. Again, this is just an example of how analog input changes the thrust characteristics and how you interact with the aircraft. These reasons are why I mentioned previously that having analog input bound to as many controls as possible is superior to having digital buttons. I think at this point you get the picture. It's time to wrap things up. I could mention other things like joystick firmware, joystick software, or even making your own input devices, especially ones that already have the number of analog inputs you'd need. And while that is in the scope of my channel, through the process of writing and rewriting this video, I feel like it falls outside of the scope of this video, at least. So let's move on to my final thoughts. Some things a joystick is going to be superior for, for other things, the mouse will be. In the end, it all mostly evens out. And I think that's the important takeaway here. It's simply another method for controlling and playing Planetside. One that is not too common, but certainly one that is a lot of fun. If you're flying a Valkyrie, a Galaxy, or maybe even a Liberator, this setup is certainly going to work. And if you're a hardcore ESF pilot, this type of setup is probably not going to work. At least not to the degree of keeping you competitive and certainly not without higher quality joysticks. If you're flying an ESF, then you might want to consider a hybrid setup, where you use an off-handed stick or throttle with enough axis inputs to control vertical thrust and throttle, and maybe even another analog axis such as those on pedals to control yaw so that you don't have to use digital input of A and D on your keyboard. That way you're still free to aim with the mouse. Otherwise, straight up mouse and keyboard is still probably going to be your best bet for an ESF. In conclusion, I feel like if you have a joystick and throttle laying around and you enjoy flying in Planetside, 
especially if you like the Galaxy or the Valkyrie, then this may be something you want to try. You're not aiming with either of those vehicles, so you don't get the disadvantage of aiming with a stick, but you do get all of the other advantages that I previously listed. In order to make this viable for every player, so they don't get trapped in the technical issues and coming down to pure luck trying to get their devices detected, at minimum, the developers would need to add support for more devices. If you feel like you can properly assault the technical issues, then this may be something for you. Another wishlist item to make this easier, the addition of joystick curves integrated in-game instead of the simple sliders that we have now. I know it's a long shot and probably not something we'd ever see, but it would still be a nice feature. So now, with all that information downloaded into your brain by Nanite Osmosis, you should be able to answer the question, should you use a joystick in Planetside 2? Leave a comment down below if this is something you want to try, or even if you think I'm just pretty crazy. Let me know if you have any questions about my own setup. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it down below and share with your friends. And if you want more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for your support.